and welcome back to the Dandelion Diaries. I hope you're having a great day. This video is heavily inspired by another creator here on YouTube. Her name is uh, Leanne. She's from Leanne Likes and she inspired me to create my own ink journal. So I was going to try to do an ink exploration today of all of the black inks that I have to see which one really is the blackest and which one I think I would want to either buy another bottle of because I love these two over here or if I just want to stick with the ones that I currently have. As for supplies today, I have the same tools that she uses actually. I found a condiment cup that I already had in my pantry since I know she uses one of those to make her circle swatches instead of using cotton swabs. I think this is a really good idea to be more earth friendly, more, yeah less less waste I have my eyedropper this is um this was from like a health food store that I got a long time ago they're really cheap you can buy them on Amazon I have my Jacques Herbon uh, glass dip pen I also have a glass of water here to help clean off my like tools as I go and then this is an old white t-shirt that I have been using for a while now to dry off my ink stuff and it kind of looks like tie-dye and I really like it so yeah if you have any old white t-shirts definitely do this this is cool um so yeah I'm going to start with all of my samples. I have samples from Goulet, Vanessa, uh, I think, I think I have one from Penchelli. I don't No, no, I don't. Okay. Not Penchelli, but I do like to get samples before I buy bottles just because I think bottles are really hard to go through. <laughs> so if you haven't tried a sample, definitely check those places out. They have tons of different ink samples to look at. But for our first one, we are going to do Sailor Black. So to me, this black is very much like a gray black. And then when it dries, I believe it has a little bit of a black sheen to it, which is really nice. Another thing is like when you do get samples, just know that the vials are really hard to get fountain pens into. So just keep that in mind. And also I'm just wiping off the excess ink on the grip so I don't get it all over my hands. A very nice standard black ink. <laughs> the next one I have is actually another Sailor ink. This is Sailor Manio Chigaya. And I recently got all of the inks from the Manio line because I had some birthday money left over and I really wanted to give them a try. So if you're interested in me doing a video with all of these Sailor Monios, let me know because I think it would be really fun to see all of them kind of like lined up on a page together so you can see if they're similar or different or whatever. So as you can see, this one's already much more of a dark, almost red black, and it is much wetter than the traditional Sailor Black. So the next ink I have is Pilot Hiroshizuku Take Sumi. This is probably, hmm, I don't know. I don't know. I think this is the lightest black of the group. I mean, as you can see, compared to the Sailor Black, it is much lighter and that it it's more of like a gray black. But at the same time, when you write with it, I feel like it's way better than some of the other black inks. And I honestly really love the Pilot Hiroshizuku inks. I think they're just... The wetness of them and the flow in actual fountain pens is so nice. Pilot always does a really good job with their inks, in my opinion. Speaking of, the next one I have is Pilot Black, and I'm actually almost out of this. This is probably my favorite black ink that I have ever used. And I'm really sad that my sample is gone, but I already ordered cartridges of this one actually because I feel like they, it works the best in my uh, Pilot pens. But it is just the most black, black, black ink, I think, out of all of the bunch. And maybe ca the camera will pick it up, maybe not, but it just has the best pigment in my opinion. Even, you'll see, It's I think it's even better than the carbon black. But like, look at how black it is. I mean, obviously all of the inks are black we're working with today, but it is just the darkest, most beautiful black. Ugh, just yes. And this is the Pilot Namiki 
definitely probably my favorite next we have probably the most popular black ink out there and that is platinum carbon black um this is a pigmented ink which means it has floating pigment i have heard scary things about people who have used this in their fountain pens and how it basically mutilates the inner workings of the pen if you don't clean it out regularly so I have been too afraid to put this in any of my really nice fountain pens, but I have used it in my like Kawekos or Kovecos and it, I haven't had any issues. But as you can see, like I can't even clean out the dropper well enough because of the amount of pigment in this ink. But it is definitely the blackest of the black. I will say with writing it is very smooth compared to some of the other inks and maybe it is because of that pigment that it has in there but it is definitely a very dark pigmented black ink i think it almost has like a brown undertone to it too like a, almost like a, a warmer a warmer color to it next is going to be waterman intense black this is definitely a favorite of mine my only issue with it is it is very much I don't know it almost has like a a grayish undertone but as for black inks with writing waterman is very nice see it's almost like a blue black compared to some of the others and the last sample that i have is actually a shimmering black so this is troublemakers polar lights and i absolutely love this ink it is so cool it's it's just like looking up at the aurora Bo borealis i can't say that word right now aurora borealis the lights in the sky in the in the polar north that's exactly what it reminds me of and i'm sure that's what they were going for the only thing i find really interesting about this ink and this is the first troublemaker ink that i have is that it it's sticky like it has a a stickiness to it but at the same time when it dries you'll see what i mean the properties that it has see it's like it's almost gray see it like it strings and i don't know if maybe i just got a bad sample or what but it's very weird to me how it's very like it's it's got a stickiness to it but when it dries it's it's dry i mean i don't have any issues with it drying funky or anything and the last black inks that i have are the full bottle inks so i'll start with the non-shimmering one this is diamonds onyx black this was the very first ink bottle i ever purchased and i had done no research i had no idea what i was doing i just needed a black ink because i had a fountain pen and i needed to put ink in it and i usually write with black in most of my journals and things this was before obviously discovering the wealth of ink colors out there but i got this bottle and i was like i'm gonna get the biggest one because i need to make sure i have enough because i write a lot and i do i mean i i write every single day probably two or three pages and i absolutely hated this ink when i first got it i opened it up i put it in my pen and i was like this just sucks it is the worst black it is gray like it didn't it didn't write well and I just I was so upset because I basically thought I purchased a bad ink and that I was gonna have to be stuck with it turns out it was just my pen which is why it's so important to try different inks in different pens to see how they behave. And what happened was, I guess my pen was just too new, like I hadn't cleaned it well enough or something, and it didn't want to write with this kind of ink. But it is honestly a beautiful black ink, and it has a very high sheening, uh, high black sheen when it dries. All right, and the last ink that I have is my newest favorite black ink um, and i recently did a haul for this actually um i posted it on monday this week which is when this video is going to go up but this is the atlas iron ore from ferris wheel press and it is an atlas stationers exclusive so if you want to get it you can use my code danielle10 to get 10 percent off 
but this is the most gorgeous black ink with a red sheen and a silver color shimmer. It is, it's almost like gunmetal to me. Like it's, it's beautiful. I'm honestly a really big fan of Ferris Wheel Press inks. I have several of their inks that I have just accumulated over time. And I really love the way that they write. They are a bit drier and maybe it's because I have a lot of really wet flowing pens but the only complaint I have is with the bottles. They are super hard to fill with your fountain pen, and that is because the necks of the bottles are super, super narrow, but you'll see when this one dries, it is just absolutely stunning. So this one is definitely in my lineup for June because I want to use up, obviously, because I have a full bottle, but also because I want to try it in the new pen that I got, which is the Coveco Sport. And I got a broad nib. And the color I got was the Sage, or yeah, Smooth Sage. And I'm really excited to ink it up with this because I think it will look really cool in a broad nib. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and then I will be back and I will show you guys kind of how they look after they have dried on the page. Okay, so it's been about, I don't know, maybe like an hour, I think. I didn't really time it, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the swatches are pretty much all totally dried and I wanted to take you guys in for a close up so you can see all of those sheens and shimmers. So we'll start with the top corner over here. So with the Sailor Black, there is a very mild, black sheen to it, as with the Sailor Manyo Shigaya. They're pretty much very, very much the same. The Shigaya is a little bit darker and has less of that gray, watered down black look. As for the Pilot inks, the Pilot Iroshizuku Take Sumi is more blue leaning and it does have a little bit of blue shading to it. And then the Namiki Black is just the blackest of the black out of all of the inks on these pages in my opinion. Both of them do have a mild black sheen. The Iroshizuku is a little bit more red black. Um, it's very interesting. As for the Platinum Carbon Black, it too has that mild black sheening. It is much lighter and this is still a little bit wet which is why it looks very shiny right there. But as you can see it is a flat black. It is pretty much just your standard medium black color. And since it is a pigmented ink, it didn't have hardly any kind of variation across the swatch. Moving on to the other side, this is the Waterman Intense Black up here at the top. And as you can see, it's a little bit more blue black as it dries. So when it's shaded, it's very much a blue black ink. It looks very similar to the Takisumi. If we had them side by side together, they're almost identical. For the Troublemakers Polar Night, as you can see that beautiful, almost holographic turquoise shimmer, it really does look like that Aurora Borealis and it is absolutely gorgeous. I haven't inked this in a pen yet, but I am excited to try it out in one of my future currently inks. But for now, I'm just gonna leave the sample in its vial since it is a little sticky and I wanna play with it a little bit more with the glass pen. For the Diamine Onyx Black, you can see that very high sheen black on it, and it is just absolutely dark. So the two darkest blacks that I have are definitely the Pilot Namiki and then the Diamine Onyx Black, and they're almost the exact same for each other. The Diamine is a little bit warmer, a little bit more gray leaning, and then the Namiki is just the blackest of the black in my opinion. And then lastly, my newest black ink, which is definitely the coolest is the Atlas Iron Ore. It has more of a blue-black undertone and that red sheen with the silver shimmer is absolutely stunning. So I'm very happy with this and we'll definitely be inking it in June. So stay tuned if you're interested to see what I'm currently inking up in my June fountain pens. So I don't know if I mentioned this when I started the video, um, but this is a Hobonichi A5 notebook. It has the Yamazakura cover. Um, it's just standard 52 GSM Tomoe River paper, and I really wanted to use it for my currently 
or not my current link. I really wanted to use it for my ink journal because I absolutely love the Yamazakura like design. I, I bought almost everything from that collection because it just, it was amazing. Like uh, dandelion plans. Hello, we have to get the dandelion. Yeah. I mean, it just, it makes sense. <laughs> Anyways, the one thing that I wanted to show, even though these are still a little bit wet, is I did go ahead and leave a piece of paper underneath the toilet paper because as you can see with the large ink swatches and the pooling of the ink, it does bleed through, which is saying something because toilet paper paper hardly ever bleeds through. But I wanted to show you guys that it didn't bleed through on the writing, only on the ink sample. So... In situations like this, I would definitely either glue another piece of Tomoe River paper on the back so I can still use both sides of the page, but I don't know how many pages I'm actually going to use if I only use this for 2023, so I'll probably end up gluing pages together or maybe just writing over it, putting stickers, washi, whatever I feel like. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe because I'm going to be doing these for all of the shades of the rainbow. So this is number one and it is black, which is the most standard ink. But next I'll probably either do my blues or my grays. So let me know which one you'd prefer in the comments. But if you're interested in more content from me, I do have an Instagram. It is the.dandelion.diaries. I will leave my handle on the screen and you can follow me over there for more fun stationary content for fountain pens, planners, journals, etc. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.